All right, all right. Yeah, let's uh, let's get started. Nintendo trying to kill Smash Part Two. Sadly, much more spicy than Part One. But let's go over it. Let's go over it. How Nintendo has hurt the Smash community. This was written months prior to Nintendo sending a C and D to Big House. It was not written with that context in mind. This is being released anonymously for obvious reasons. To begin, I want to state that I'm not a journalist. What I'm writing below is directly for what I've been told by the individuals who work at these companies who are deeply familiar with the business dealings of these companies by the nature of their positioning in esports. I did not obtain emails, contracts, or documents to verify these claims. I am merely trusting their word. If a journalist wants to take it to the next level to check everything, I would encourage it. I also want to point, point out that what I write below does not just include Melee. Most of what I'm about to describe applies to Smash 4, Ultimate, and even Brawl as well. All Smash scenes have been held back by Nintendo's actions. I think this is a great way to start it off. Uh, the whole like free me uh, melee movement, even though even though like you know Ultimate for example got impacted uh, with you know the whole big house fiasco. Thank you Nintendo once again. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll, like some people do not seem to understand that even Ultimate got like you know punished because of melee. So I think it's good here to start off with Smash 4 Ultimate and even Brawl. It shows very long history, very long history of Nintendo trying to sabotage and over the course of, you know, multiple titles. I'm writing this for the purpose of making the community at large aware of the things that I and many other members of the community have been aware of for years, but were simply unwilling to talk about publicly because of the hopes that Nintendo would make something happen. That hope is pretty much gone for me now, so I feel completely okay with sharing what I know. Uh, for the longest time, for the longest time, it's been known that Nintendo has wanted to avoid supporting the Smash esports scene in a way that helped us grow past the grassroots level. Nintendo is in this tidy that, for cultural or financial reasons, has simply chosen not to get involved in esports with Smash. At least not on the level that publishers get involved in most major esports. We have heard quotes from top executives at Nintendo many times about their disinterest in competitive gaming. We accept this because it's their IP and they can have whatever vision they see fit for it. Yeah, I mean, this is also like a thing, right? I feel like a lot of people that are not like really aware of the whole situation, like hypothetically, hypothetically, it's not the people who want true support from Nintendo. Uh, it's just that most people realize that that will never ever happen. Basically, what Smashers are asking is, please ignore us. Please let people, you know, run their tournaments. Please let people enter tournaments. And please let people spectate tournaments. So, I do feel like it's like... I can't even, like, say that we're asking for much. It's basically just pretend like we don't exist. Just let people enjoy, you know, the games you guys made. Just let people enjoy them. That's apparently too much to ask from Nintendo. Even if charities, even if a pandemic happens, it's too much to ask to get ignored. However, Nintendo's stance feels less innocent when you understand that they also deliberately prevent other entities from helping our scene through various actions or inaction. Furthermore, these acts have gone on while stamping their names on our grassroots events or inviting a few of our personalities to their events. Yeah, this is also like the really, really the part it's like they're taking advantage of the scene right you had plenty of smashers at their invitational for ultimate you had plenty of smashers at their invitational for smash 4 so like they know that smashers have reach right especially when ultimate came out when smash 4 came out like the smash scene was still like you know it was not super small but it was significantly smaller with ultimate like a lot of you know uh, players, personalities, uh, commentators, whatever they are, had like, you know, a significantly bigger following, whether it's on Twitch, YouTube, uh, Twitter. So basically, they, they were using free advertisements uh, and trying to like give the hope that maybe something happens, right? Really, really toxic. Really, really toxic. 
We regularly get this mention of hope that they are taking steps in the right direction, but no significant changes ever take place. They directly benefit from our community's existence while providing relatively little support and taking actions that hurt or seen. I mean, I, I think whoever wrote this, you're very nice. Relatively little support, I would say no support, and you know, taking actions that hurt or seen. So yeah, this person was very kind to Nintendo here. I'll go a bit more ham personally. Anyway, this note is written to shed light on the different ways Nintendo has stopped the scene from growing. As a part of this community, you deserve to know what many top players and influencers in the Smash scene have known for years. The only reason I speak on this now is because I feel we are now at the point where we have nothing to lose. In the past, we'd be afraid to speak publicly because there was some hope that they were so close to having a real eSport relationship with Nintendo, only to have that opportunity consistently slip away. All right, now we get to the spicy parts. Third party entities that have attempted to work with Smash. There are several entities that have attempted to work with Nintendo to create events for Melee, Smash 4 and Ultimate. The following are just some of the bigger eSport entities that were brought up to me, which means that it might be more. Seems, it's like a never ending like shithole, right? It just keeps being more and more. It's actually crazy. Uh, E-League, the organization that has brought Counter-Strike, Street Fighter and many other games to ESPN had attempted to throw a large event for Smash. In the end, they only got rights to rebroadcast the E3 Ultimate Invitational. <laughs> My source explained to me that the rebroadcast rights served mostly as a consolation from Nintendo, as Nintendo was incorporating on allowing them to run a meaningful Smash event. Oh, so yeah, they were only allowed to rebroadcast the Invitational. Yeah, why am I not surprised? Do something that benefits us and we do nothing in return. Yeah, sounds accurate. HTC. This one I have not heard about one before. I have read this one uh, uh, myself as soon as it came out yesterday. I think I was the first one to retweet this. Uh, a lot of these things I have heard about. Uh, the HTC one I haven't. But basically, like this, this twit longer, 90% of the things mentioned, or at least 80, 85, I know, uh, I know are accurate. But some of the stuff I haven't heard about, but due to how much of the things that is true, I'm willing to believe that, you know, the rest of the 10, 20%. Uh, anyway. HTC. After HTC Throwdown, a successfully capped one-day event ran by HTC Esports, they had an interest in running a Smash circuit with more money than we had ever seen in Smash. However, because an official Nintendo slash Twitch circuit was just about finalized. I heard about this fucking circuit ever since like 2015 or some shit. Uh, HTC was asked to instead aim to sponsor the main circuit rather than running a competing circuit. Those HTC backed out on running the circuit under the expectation that a Twitch slash Nintendo circuit would come to, uh, yeah, whatever, how you pronounce that word, fruition? Doesn't matter. As we know, this circuit never came to be, as I will discuss in the Twitch section below. Alright, so you have, you know, HTC that wants to, you know, help out big, big time. And basically, it's like, no, don't do that. You know, Nintendo is going to come through. Nintendo is going to come through. ESL. ESL made an attempt to work with Nintendo to run its own circuit slash league, but Nintendo was largely unresponsive. They tried making meaningful contact with the company, prepared Dex to sell the idea, but it couldn't go anywhere as Nintendo would not respond. I think it's interesting to note that Nintendo was willing to have Splatoon on ESL, to me, this shows that Nintendo will support scenes that don't thrive on their own, like Splatoon and ARMS, but they won't touch Smash because they can hang back and reap the benefits that we create as a grassroots community, essentially letting us do all the work while doing nothing to help us get bigger. I don't know enough about Splatoon, ARMS, uh, in these games, so I, I can't say too much on that part, uh, but the, the Smash part in this section, uh, 100% sounds accurate. 100% sounds accurate. Uh, yeah, let the grassroots community do all the work, take advantage of them whenever we see fit, and then throw them away. Yeah, sounds fully accurate. MLG. MLG in 2015. MLG held an event with Melee and later with Smash 4. 
according to my source, MLG did not continue working with Melee after MLG Anaheim in 2015 because Nintendo wanted to charge a $50,000 licensing fee per event. Per event? Oh my god. Yeah, that, that's basically like, yeah, killing the event straight up. Over double the asking rate for Street Fighter 4, a much more modern game at the time. This practice to me seems like a way to effectively shut down Melee at MLG without directly preventing them from running it. I would also assume that this fee would be charged and no real support would be provided by Nintendo, as has been the case with some of her grassroots events. So yeah, this is like basically, yeah, kill the event, $50,000. Uh, yeah, there's no way they, they are going to be able to afford that. For every single event as well. Yeah. So that was basically Nintendo killing MLG in 2015 too. Or post-2015, I guess. Uh, there have been other incidents relating to MLG that have been spoken of publicly by former employees and insiders. Such as the fact that Nintendo denied MLG the rights to stream Brawl in 2010. See? This is, you know, the hashtag is now Save Smash. Save Smash. So yep, they hurt Brawl as well. Uh, then Nintendo denied USA from televising uh, the Smash portion of their events in 06. And the following quote from Sundance. We of course know that the Smash community is just as excited as we are to follow the tournament and see who makes their mark on the biggest stage in gaming. And we're committed to doing everything we can to make our coverage of the tournament as comprehensive as possible. However, I'm sorry to say that we will not be able to have a live stream for Smash in Orlando this weekend. In order to stream something like this, we have to secure live streaming rights from the game's publisher. And despite our best efforts, we have not been able to get permission from Nintendo thus far. We kept the conversation going all the way down to the wire in hopes we get an 11th hour approval and can still stream the event. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. All right, so Nintendo once again hurting the scene. What a surprise. I gotta say though, I'm like, I'm happy all of this is like, you know, getting brought up. It's a really sad story, but it's good that it's like, you know, out in the open. A lot of people don't know about pretty much anything of these things. I know this is disappointing news and believe me, we don't like it either. There is no way around it. A company of our size simply has to play by the rules. I know a lot of you guys have seen local Smash tournaments streamed online and probably wondering why we can't just do the same thing. The answer is because we are a real company with real visibility and real things to lose. We can't fly under the radar like a local tournament can, nor would we want to. Yep, that's very, very true. That's like, yeah, that's like why these smaller events, they're never going to get target targeted by Nintendo because it's just like, even Nintendo are, I can't even say smart enough, uh, but they're not stupid enough to target, you know, like locals with like 20 players, maybe 50 stream viewers. Don't get me wrong, these locals and stuff, really important still, but it's small to the point where even Nintendo are not stupid enough. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably not out of reach in the future uh, with Nintendo's history, but at least for now, at least for now, not even Nintendo are that stupid. While the MLG era was a very long time ago, the impact of those decisions hit the scene the most at a point where it was just starting to thrive and would have effectively shut us down had it not been for our revival in 2013 due to the EVO slash documentary. Yeah, the, the MLG stuff like going as far back as like 2006, uh, 2006, 2007 with trying to kill Melee. Like yeah, EVO 2013 and the documentary like literally saved uh, the scene. So Nintendo almost successfully killed competitive Smash uh, without basically anyone ever knowing about it. Uh, Red Bull. Initially, it was Red Bull, Twitch, and Nintendo in talks to start a circuit similar to Red Bull Proving Grounds for Smash, a circuit where monthly tournaments could take place across cities in the US, and at the end of the season, the top players from each uh, local would come to compete in a championship event. Red Bull did much of the lead work to uh, get it to launch, but it was Red Bull that was effectively cut from the conversations and the deal altogether. So another major company, and uh, Nintendo, you know, shuts it down. Dude, what's the count at right now? How many companies? How many places? How many tournaments? Can humanity even count this far? I'm not even sure at this point. Uh, Twitch. Twitch and a, a later removed Red Bull had been in negotiations negotiations with Nintendo to run a sanctionized circuit for Smash, including Smash 4 and Melee. So yeah, 
Again, hash, like hashtag save smash or save uh, yeah save smash, including Smash Four and Melee starting around 2015. Yeah, yeah, this was around the time I started hearing hearing about Circus. Uh, Twitch was fronting the cost of this deal with a budget in the millions per year, so millions more than Nintendo have ever done. Even though they appreciate the love and dedication, right? Uh, while Nintendo would own the League brand. Oh, they, yeah, they would own the League brand, doing nothing, uh, despite their lack of financial contribution. During this time, it seemed like Twitch was always close, only to have conversations left without a response from Nintendo for months, those delaying the process. Eventually, around early 2018, after three years of man-hours and efforts to appease Nintendo, the parties came to an agreement. This wasn't just a verbal agreement, or an agreement made in good faith. It was a written contractual agreement meant to kick off the circuit for both Melee and Smash 4. This would have been the moment that legitimized Melee and Smash 4 as a major esport. For years we had the viewership, the engagement and the fan base to say we were a top esport, but we lacked official sanctioning from our developer. Now after years of manpower, money and stress in dealing with Nintendo, we got a written agreement to start a circuit. So what happened? Unbeknownst to anyone, Nintendo had plans to announce Smash Ultimate in 2018. Nintendo began ghosting those working at Twitch, even after the agreement was made. Then, once Ultimate was announced, Nintendo came back to Twitch and effectively stated that the circuit no longer made sense with Ultimate in sight. They told Twitch they wanted to see how the community responded to Ultimate, and see if getting involved in eSport this way would make sense once the game was released. Twitch was effectively told they'd have to wait again, and that Conversations may be revived later in the year when Ultimate came out. So Nintendo actually had a signed agreement and then back backs out. A signed agreement. This close. This close. Oh dude, that that's like that's so that's so sad. Yeah, they they literally ledge camped for over three years and then they finally signed the deal, and then it's like, nah, forget about it. Yeah, they ledge camped for three years. And they didn't even have the lead, and then they still ended up winning. I'm so mad. So another close call. Another year of delay, and no guarantee that they would make anything work once Ultimate was out. It's been a while since Ultimate's release, with no news inside of a circuit, and as far as I've been made aware, those talks of a circuit are completely dead. So, Nintendo killed another thing. Major thing. My personal comments on the Entitus above, according to my source, the Entitus mentioned above, every single one of them have attempted to work with Nintendo while fronting all of the costs. In other words, they attempt to work with Nintendo without asking for a dime from them. All they seek is permission. This is not the normal practice. Typically, developers front some money themselves for a chance to run a circuit with companies. Uh, in this instance, we have Twitch and Red Bull willing to put down a lot of money to run a circuit and still hardly anything comes from Nintendo. Yeah, actually nothing at all. Basically, like, we are helping you guys out. All we want is just be allowed to help out. Uh, another thing to note is that the people who have put oops, uh, years and countless hours into making this work with Nintendo also worked on making circuits happening for Tekken, Dragon Ball Fighters, and Street Fighter. Circuits for those games came to fruition within months. The negotiations were much more simple. Yet with Nintendo and Smash, the process has taken over five years and counting. At a certain point, it becomes clear that Nintendo doesn't want Smash Esports to happen, but they allow people to think it will. If you allow me, I would like to give my personal thoughts on what this all means. Nintendo knows there is a benefit in keeping the Smash scene hopeful, while never shutting us down completely. Think about it. If Nintendo really had such a problem with Smash Esports, they could shut it down. Likewise, if Nintendo really wanted us to succeed, they could just apply their incredible uh, resources to make it happen. I have some thoughts on why we get neither outcome and why Nintendo remains conveniently uncommitted to either scenario. 
shutting us down completely would be very bad publicity. At this point, we as a community have enough of a voice to influence the actions of major corporations, including Nintendo, which is why hashtag save smash is important you have some of these people online nintendo is not gonna care blah 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 these major corporations of course if you're trending you know in places like twitter for you know for a long ass time multiple countries nintendo is a company at the end of the day they want to make money and if they are like you know trending worldwide because they are you know pieces of shit that's not something they want that's not something they want that's why we gotta keep making our voices heard uh it's a marvel of the internet. They famously reversed their reprehensibly decision to shut down Melee stream at EVO 2013 uh, and the tournament, and the tournament, not only the stream. Uh, after we raised close to $100,000 to fight breast cancer. Uh, breast cancer research, yeah. Uh, I mean, breast cancer research, Nintendo, nah, nah. It's, you know, nah. Uh, you know, Melee, Melee is uh, so evil that not even $100,000-ish for breast cancer research, nah, can't let the world, you know, play some Melee, watch some Melee. We caused a ruckus on the internet, and five hours later, we were back on stream at Evo. The effects of the mo uh, moment ring out today. We're way bigger now, and they know how lo loud our voices are. Perhaps that is exactly why they only dip their toes and pretend to help the scene. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, they, they, they pretend to help the scene. Before this went public, and even probably after all of this went public, you had so many, like, warriors on the internet that was like, you know, Nintendo, they must be helping so much. Why would they otherwise have their logo on stream? They help tournaments with so much money. They don't help with shit. Best case scenario, like, the help you get is that a particular event didn't get shut down. Thank you, Nintendo. Uh... Maybe they don't want to help us grow and get louder. Maybe they don't want to spend money on this esports thing. Maybe they think competitive Smash differs from their vision for the game. Fine. However, while all that may be true, they simultaneously do what our they simultaneously do want what our voices give them. Marketing. A whole lot of free marketing. It makes sense when I think about it. They're always uh, feeding support, never really providing it, never really stopping us either. Now you might believe that Nintendo really doesn't need our communities to sell games. That's probably correct. However, does it benefit them to allow us to exist as we do? Oh god, yes. I mean, this one should be obvious for people, but yeah, let's continue. I think it's very clear that Nintendo benefits from the influencers that the esports community has created. Hell, Nintendo has even used these influencers for their invitationals at E3 to help promote the game. Look at it this way. Imagine a world where Smash Esports wasn't a thing, and Nintendo releases a Direct. You probably have quite a few people watching on their computers in their privacy of their homes, and when it's done, they shut down and move on with their day. What we have instead are those very same people replying to Esam's tweet, sharing Leffen's video, playing Hbox's reaction on repeat. You get hundreds of millions of impressions from fans of these influencers spreading news of the game everywhere. Yeah, I mean, this one should be beyond obvious for people. This one should be beyond obvious. They do benefit from the Smash scene. It, and the thing is, like, yes, Smash as a franchise wouldn't die out if the competitive scene dies out. But they still very clearly, very clearly benefit. And that's why they, you know, want to have Smashers uh, uh, helping them out. They want all the help but not helping at all, and actively damage in the process. Uh, it doesn't take an advertising genius to understand the power of influencer marketing, and Nintendo is getting it not just for free, but while actively suppressing our scene from getting larger, and I think that's awful. It is indeed awful. The effects on, uh, of this on the scene are being felt greater than ever before. Companies don't have the same enthusiasm on working with Smash like they used to, if they're even trying at all anymore. And as far as I know, ESL and E-League have nothing in the works for us, and Red Bull has resorted to clever workarounds to help us out on events without getting the hammer from Nintendo. Effects on the scene. Nintendo and grassroots events, it's a crazy world we live in when the announcement of a Nintendo-approved grassroots events is considered a bad thing by much of the community. Yep. Uh, 
like as soon as I see a tournament, you know, worked up with Nintendo, I was like, <sighs> what are we gonna give up this time? PM, UCF, like, it's like the the, the only thing was like, oh, we, I guess we don't have the risk to get shut down. But I mean, that happened to Big House now. So the the one benefit is not even like a benefit any longer. Only coming with like, you know, huge issues. So, yeah, it's sad. Like, I can't think of a single game where the developer goes in and sponsors a tournament and people are like, fuck, this, this sucks. This is so bad. Nintendo, the only company on the planet I can think about, uh, when it comes to gaming at least, uh, like brings out that effect. Where people are actually sad and mad that they are partnering up with tournaments. Uh, it's a near guarantee that UCF, Slippy, and PM won't be present. I spoke to a few TOs to get some insight as to what comes with a Nintendo partnership for an event. For my conversations... The benefits include allowing events to use their brand, which adds le legitimacy to sponsors and potential attendees. The thing is, this adds mainly, this This turns more legit due to the fact that Nintendo have done literally like 100 pages of shit that makes companies afraid to help out, right? So I can't even say that this is like a benefit really. It's that Nintendo has been hurting the scene for so long and so much that if they don't see Nintendo's logo, they might be afraid to help out. So, I, I mean, I, I can't even call it a benefit, but I, I understand the point. I understand the point. The event won't get a, a C&D. Not that it would be likely to begin with, but this partnership guarantees that it won't. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, this, this is so tragic to read this. For some events, they're supposed to use the Nintendo uh, VS Twitter account to post about the event. For one event in particular, Nintendo did not deliver on that, but did during the second year. Oh shit, they were supposed to make one tweet. One tweet for all the hard work. For all the hard work from the scene, they were supposed to make a tweet or two, but couldn't even come through with that during the first year. It sounds like a lot of people needs to get fired. That's most lit. Support varies between events after that. One TEO received uh, partial support for consoles at the event, while others did not. Was that the one event that get some did get some consoles and the characters were not even unlocked and people had to play the entire night to unlock everything before the tournament started next morning? I think that was the one event. Good shit. One event with consoles, characters not even unlocked. Good shit, Nintendo. Uh, while no TO I spoke to received uh, directional financial support. Yeah, no TO received financial support. At least one event received indirect support via connections that enable discounts for setups and equipment. However, every Splatoon setup was provided by Nintendo at every event they were part of. All right, we got Splatoon setups. Sorry, I, I apologize. We got Splatoon setups. This is not me trying to shit on Splatoon. I actually think Splatoon is pretty fun. I streamed it. But it's like tragic. That I guess the biggest support Smash events got was Splatoon setups. It just doesn't make sense. Imagine if Splatoon tournaments and the, the biggest support they got was a few ultimate setups. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Nintendo will also take up floor space for ultimate Activision areas before the game's release. This is all without directly paying the tournament organizers. So effectively, they were taking up floor space that people typically have to pay for to promote their own upcoming titles at events filled with Nintendo fans. It seems Nintendo can fully support games of their choosing when they want to. I mean, I will say, when they had ultimate at some tournaments, I am sure overall people are happy about it, but, you know... That that was only to benefit themselves, and you know they didn't help out in the process. As they stayed here, other people have to you know pay uh, for their spot. Nintendo, billion multi billion dollar company. Nah, we are not gonna pay shit. Uh, final note on this: TOs are obligated to run Nintendo ads for these Nintendo sanctioned events. Considering how little they actually do for the event, that's pretty hilarious. Yep, another one of the demands from Nintendo while not doing anything. Anything out of value. I actually sometimes, I, I do remember it was uh, Genesis 3. I was uh, teaming with Mewtwo King that tournament. 
and uh, we were gonna play a, a set on the main stage and we had to wait for ads and they showed some Nintendo ad I don't even remember which one and I told like I uh, I told Mutant King like yo look Nintendo sponsorship and then it was like an ad running and he was just laughing and then he did like his uh, Mutant King uh, punch it was so stupid but it was it was like funny at the same time even though it's very sad thinking about it uh, Project M slash P plus. There was no C and D. What happened is that Nintendo essentially stated that people within our scene that our community support of PM was what was preventing them from working with us. So they basically lied again. Dude, the list of lies is also so long at this point. So naturally, eager TOs and streamers saw an opportunity to work with Nintendo and contribute to the successful start of a Nintendo Smash circuit. I heard it myself from so many TOs and streamers. They thought they were doing something for the good of the scene, and I can't blame them. They choose to draw PM from their events slash streams on this promise. This naturally hurt the PM scene tremendously, and we have come to find that it was for nothing. Furthermore, the loss of PM actually cost our community due to the loss of revenue from PM attendees and viewership. PM was actually like really taking off during 2014. I think I think it was a fun game. I, I did enjoy it. Like PM Pit was actually like one of my all time favorite characters. So, I mean, yeah, that, that's sad. That's sad. But it's even more sad. Like it's even more sad that it's like uh, that they were, you know, trying to play it off as like, yeah, PM, that's the issue. If you guys get rid of PM, we are going to give you guys so much. That's the even more messed up part. That's the even more messed up part. Like, don't get me wrong, I really like uh, PM slash P+. Uh, I've had my issues with the game, but in general, I've had a lot of enjoyment uh, playing uh, at least some of the, you know, versions of uh, PM and uh, P+, which I also streamed quite a bit. Uh, like, I can understand if Nintendo have an issue with it, even though it's really sad and, you know, I wish they didn't. But it's it's so tragic when it's like they play it off as like, you know, this is what hinders, this is what stops Nintendo from, you know, giving you guys so much. And then other people had to take the blame uh, while Nintendo somehow managed to escape the blame. Or at least escape most of the blame. They, they should have gotten. Uh, Esport teams. You will notice that a lot of top players have been having trouble securing a team. And players on tier 1 teams have been getting let go. A long time ago the teams were hopeful for Smash. And there was a surge of player pickups because of the crazy level of fan engagement. Paired up with the hope for an eventual Nintendo circuit that never came to be. Teams have begun to understand that Nintendo will never support the game. And have thus far... Those had to make the difficult decision to drop several Smashers over the last few years. Yeah, you can actually see a clear difference. A clear difference. And this was even prior to COVID. Uh, that it was getting harder. A lot of Im amazing players. Uh, amazing content creators having huge issues with, you know, uh, getting their chance. Uh, due to Nintendo, again. Uh, closing thoughts. Keep up the passion in protecting the Smash community. Every single part of the community has been held back by Nintendo. While Nintendo is powerful, I truly believe that our love for the various Smash games is strong enough to allow us to continue on for years, even decades, into the future. We have survived for this long despite many hurdles, and we can overcome the new ones too. Damn, that, that was a long one. And this one, uh, uh, after reading this, I heard... Uh, the, the the Smash World Circuit, the World Tour, uh, that Gamer uh, was working on, like DGBC, uh, Nintendo apparently aimed to like try to shut that down too. Nintendo tried to shut down that one too. So when Smash was finally gonna get a circuit, a grassroots circuit, Nintendo was gonna come for that as well. So. That's the thing. Nothing, nothing is off the table when it comes to Nintendo. Pandemic and people want to play from home. That, you know, Nintendo, they don't care. Raising a shit ton of money for, you know, breast cancer research. Nope, we don't care. 
And then, you know, all these lies, like, look at all this. This is like so much text and so much shit. And I'm sure this covers like 90% of the, the, you know, uh, you know, lies and how much they've heard the scene, but it's probably even more out there that is not in this, uh, in this document. It's sad. Nintendo, when it comes to Smash, have actively tried to kill competitive Smash. Not only Melee, like, every single title seems to be affected, but I guess Smash 64. Uh, I, I don't know any story about Smash 64, but I, I mean, technically they indirectly get punished by other Smash games getting punished. So, yeah, you can really say that the entire Smash franchise have had to suffer uh, through to, uh, because of Nintendo. And that's why we, you know, we gotta keep it up. We gotta keep it up uh, on Twitter. Uh, keep giving them bad publicity. Uh, again, I'm not sure if, you know, they will change their mind, but it's the best thing we can do right now. So, please uh, tweet out hashtag SaveSmash.